Hello to my fellow racers, it's Aaron here. I hope you're all doing well indeed. Now for those of you who watched my last video, which was the video review of my race weekend at Donington Park, you'll see that I've unfortunately had to retire from race two with a transmission related uh, issue. Now I'm sad to report that that uh, issue is still being diagnosed and fixed. So I was unable to take part in the next race weekend of the Cater and Motorsport Championship, which was at Anglesey, which is such a shame. And I was absolutely gutted, to be honest with you, because out of all the tracks on the calendar, that's one that I was looking forward to the most due to uh, the track layout and just the epic scenery um, around around the circuit. Um, but I'm happy to say that that problem with the gearbox is being fixed as we speak. So fingers crossed, I should be on the grid for the remainder of the season, all things going well. Now, I'm missing being in the cockpit so, so much that uh, I thought it'd be good to share a video of uh, a quick cockpit tour that I took at Silverstone, uh, which I really wanted to share with you, just so you get a bit, a bit of insight into what it's like inside uh, the race car. Now, this one is very brief, and I'll probably do a couple more uh, throughout the season. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this gives you a very basic insight as to what it's like to sit uh, in the car and what I see from where I sit in the car. So I hope you enjoy. And here it is. So here is my car, the Cater and Road Sport uh, race car, essentially, that I'm racing uh, in the Cater and Road Sport Championship here in the UK this year. Um, so I'll just take you on a very, very basic tour. Give you a little uh, 360 here. Around the um, around the awning, so yeah, it's got classic looks. I mean, much like the uh, Porsche 911, which updates its look um, every uh, with every new iteration that's released. You can always, you can if you look, you know, at the, one of the very first Porsche 911s and one that's been made today, you can tell that they're essentially the same DNA, and it's the same with with Caterhams. They've got a very very distinctive look. Um, and even though they look like you know classic, uh, classic cars, you know on the racetrack, they are awesomely fun to drive. I've never had a, a such a raw, uh, raw driving experience both on the on the track and on the road, which is why they make um, such great race cars. Uh, so this one is powered by a Ford Sigma 1.6 uh, engine. Uh, pumping out uh, 125 brake horsepower um, and yeah it's got a great 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 power to, to weight ratio and even on a massive track like this at Silverstone which where, where I'm racing this weekend um, you could really feel the the speed down the straights I think down uh, at the end of the hangar straight um, at Stowe we were hitting around 120 miles an hour in the uh, in, in when in a tow so it's really no slouch um, and I've had some requests to, to do a bit of a tour of the inside of my car, so I'm going to do that uh, now. So here it is. I'm six foot two, and it's a quite a tight squeeze. Um, and this is my car, so I've had a custom seat made. It looked brand new and white when I first got it, but it's looking a bit, <laughs> bit race worn and, and discolored now. But it still works well. So this is a, a bead seat. Uh, which uh, basically is made by me sitting in a bag in this car um, and it, then it's mixed with in a, a bead seat so initially the bead the seat just has beads in it then it then um, a liquid solution is put in it to help harden it and then it's essentially vacuumed I've explained that process extremely quickly but essentially that's what what happens and when it's vacuumed with you sat in it it moulds itself uh, to your body, so it's um, it's made for me. In all honesty, I can't really uh, put on too much weight. I mean, already I have to kind of slide into it sideways um, to uh, to uh, to fit in it. But once I'm in, it's actually very, very, very comfortable, and I can sit in the car comfortably because uh, in this race car, in this series I'm racing in. Within the regulations, your helmet has to be five centimeters below the, the 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 roll bar, and with the standard seat, I was above that. So, I need it for, for safety reasons and for regulation reasons. Um, and it's actually very very comfortable as well. It keeps you well tight and secure in the um, in the fast corners. So, if anyone watching is interested in uh, knowing who I got the seat from, yeah, drop me a message in the comments or request in the comments, and I'll I'll get back to you. Um, and as you can see, just see my look at the car here. Um, it's got a very tight pedal box, 
So actually, um, I uh, wear a size uh, of racing boot that's one size too small to make sure that I can um, yeah, get my feet on the pedals properly. So in the very first test that I did in this car, um, in all honesty, um, I just bought a regular pair of racing boots from Demon Tweaks, which is uh, you know, a well-known retailer of motorsport equipment and racewear here in the UK. And um, I found which were my regular size and found that they, they, I'm a size 12 normally. And I found that they were actually UK size 12, that's by the way. And I found they're actually too big for, uh, for me to actually hit the brake pedal without hitting the accelerator at the same time. Uh, but there, you know, there are adjustments you can make to these pedals. So for me, um, this is my setup here. I've had the rubbers, rubber um, bits taken off the, the pedals. So I just use the the uh the bare kind of metal pedal and that helps give me a bit more leg room as well and in all honesty in all honesty it gives me a bit more feel on the on the pedals as well so it works for me it might not work for for everyone here i've got a detachable momo racing steering wheel so much for the f1 or single seater fans among you it works much like a, 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 a removable race uh, racing uh, wheel in a single seater or F1 for those of you who are F1 fans um, and it's yeah really needed for me to get in and out of the car uh, effectively um, and uh, another uh, one modification I've had uh, to the car is um, you have to excuse my, my helmet here because this is post race I've just left my my helmet and um, a bottle of water that I'm given and hands device and balaclava in the car here um, is I've taken out the um, the seat just for uh, just for a bit of weight reduction because I think I would have been would have been slightly overweight if I didn't. I'm 90 kilos or well, 91 kilos fully kitted. Um, so any uh, anywhere that uh, we can save a bit of uh, a bit of weight always helps. Um, and I can actually actually show you some of the uh, equipment that I have in the car as well. Um, so let me do that from the driver's side actually. And I'll just get in very quickly remove this so actually this is a good uh, opportunity to show you my experience of getting in and out of the car so normally you think you'd be able to get in the car through here but we have to actually climb in through the top of the roll bar I'm not in my race wear now because I've I'm in my cities now the race is over so this might be a bit more difficult but literally climb in over the top feet in the uh, in the race seat normally I get the belts out of the way so I'll just do that ensure that the uh, crop straps are uh, in a in the right position if not it's a real pain to get out of the seat to get them out again get those um, get those positioned here this is what I like to do anyway don't pull them up but just have them there I'm literally having to yeah twist my body to get in and yeah this is my view from uh, the race car itself so um, yeah these cars have got detachable doors as well I've just left mine there but yeah this is the view from the race car um, and uh, yeah this is me putting the, the steering wheel steering roll back on so you need to like yeah you need to uh, yeah pull this all the way back to get it on and just make sure it's on securely and that's me uh, in the car so yeah like I said I'm six foot two I don't have a lot of space in here whatsoever so yeah I've got my steering wheel column all the way all the way back to ensure that I've got enough uh, space for when you know I'm you know in the tight corners and uh, needing to put a bit more steering wheel lock on than normal and this is it so yeah I've got my um, racing harnesses here so I'm actually sitting on on the uh, the waist one, and I've not really adjusted it since the um, since the uh, the end of the last race I was in. So yeah, um, not able to get to those. So I've got my shoulder straps here, which you can see. And yeah, there we go. So it gives you a general idea of what it's like to sit in here. And then um, yeah, so these shoulder straps sit on top of the. Uh, the hands device, the head and neck safety device, which is attached to my helmet. So in the event of a uh, you know, forward facing impact, um, it stops your head from you know, 
jolting forward and preventing you know serious uh, head and neck injury so yeah it's a really great piece of kit that sometimes when um you've got your hands device on um, and the belts are really tight sometimes it can dig in a little so it can get a bit uncomfortable but hey it's all in the name of uh, in the name of safety so it's all good um, and yeah this is the instrument cluster as you can see it's um, you know pretty basic but to be honest when I'm racing this I wouldn't say I look at this uh, at all um, I'm just looking at uh, at the uh, the track ahead so yeah, got my basic dials here. So you've got uh, RPM and uh, speedometer. I've got a horn here. <laughs> um, oh, it's just got a few weird looks there. <laughs> uh, and this is the uh, switch to switch on the lights. And um, I, you know, to be honest with you, I've actually forgotten what these are, but I think one is a um, high-low beam toggle and one is a flashing toggle for when you want to flash people. Um, you know, if you really want to, uh, intimidate your competitors <laughs> in racing you can switch your lights on and flash them like they do in touring cars but to be honest I've not seen that in catering and, and in terms of other parts of the car so I've got some uh, mirrors here which are set uh, set um, just so that I can uh, see them at eye level when I'm in the car so you can adjust these quite well both in via many angles and then just tighten the angle once I've you know, selected the angle I want I just um, I'm going to tighten that with the uh, with the Allen key here, and moving to the uh, the rear of the car. So these are the cameras that are connected to the, the V box. Um, so uh, this is the front facing camera, and this is the rear facing camera. So that it's actually really good for watching your races back, because you can see what happens both in front of you and and behind you. Um, and the rear facing camera can also be very enlightening as to you know what's going on. On, uh, on track and I also use my GoPro as well uh, for filming my videos uh, so I've got another a GoPro roll bar mount here which sits here so I can get a driver eye view of the uh, the action the racing action so I can get a different perspective as well so just popping the uh, the hood back here just to show you what's what's under here oh it's very tough so in here I've got my um, my extinguisher so this is my uh, extinguisher for the car. So as I mentioned before, um, when I pull the, the, the toggle, when the, pull, when the ring's pulled out, yeah, this extinguisher releases. So that just reminds me actually, I finished racing and um, I've got to put the pin back in. If you would just excuse me whilst I do that. Uh, I remember to do it, I'll do it once <laughs> I finish this video. Because uh, yeah, I don't want uh, to accidentally pull that lever in the car and the extinguisher to go off. But yeah, that's uh, that's the extinguisher, so it's an essential safety feature. Um, and a lot of the drivers in the, um, in the championship I race in have uh, custom number plates for uh, this race series. So for me, I've just had one made with my uh, with my surname, and. Uh, I've got uh, one at the front, but yeah, I've got another minor bit of damage from today's uh, today's race because you can see it's uh, come off here. I must have hit a bit of debris. I don't recall hitting anyone else. Um, so yeah, need to get that that fixed. Not a big not a big issue. Yeah, in this championship as well, we tape our lights up so that um, you know if they smash, they don't. You know, smash all over the ground and you know cause an extra bit of dangerous debris for, for drivers to, to hit and here we have uh, you know uh, the wheels so you can select uh, you know some drivers uh, actually um, spray their wheels different colors but I quite like the classic either black or uh, silver so I've got a set of black wheels and a set of silver wheels just uh, to mix up really and help me um, denote between my dry and wet set of tyres and yeah we use the Avon ZZS tyres um, in the Caterham Road Sport Championship which are road legal tyres um, and yeah in this championship just like on the road we have to have 1.6 millimetres of tread uh, across the centre three quarters of of the tyre um, yeah so if you finish a race or qualifying session and your um, tread depth is below that you'll be disqualified I, I believe and yeah here we've got uh, a towing towing rope uh, this is the front one there's one at the rear as well and uh, they're 
there so that if you need to be towed off circuit you can do that easily um, and here we have the uh, exhaust um, system which is external to the car for those of you who um, watch my brand hatch video you'll see that I need to get get this uh, replaced there so it's still looking shiny and new for now uh, which is which is great um, and here we have um, a side um, protection bar because these cars are quite uh, quite exposed in terms of side impact protection here so yeah I've got one on the driver's side so this is an extra piece of safety equipment um, a lot of drivers I don't have one on the on the passenger side um, and a lot of drivers don't um, I think a, some, a lot of drivers add them for uh, kind of aesthetic reasons so the car looks more balanced um, but for me personally I, I just do I, I haven't added one to save weight I mean there's no point in me um, you know, removing my seat and then adding extra weight by putting putting that in so that's why I've I've left it um, and yeah that's it that's I think that's ever covers everything um, and quite a comprehensive tour of the car um, but I can pop the hood quickly and show you what's uh, under there actually so here is uh, yeah the car with the uh, the bonnet taken off before I do that, I can just show you the nose cone actually. So the nose cone is um, this part of the car here is completely detachable as well. Um, and you might be wondering why it's black and why it's not gray like the rest of the car. Well, in the series I race in, the nose cones tend to get, uh, you know, along with these wing panels here, they tend to be the pieces of the car that get damaged most frequently so I didn't really want to you know spend more money on getting it sprayed only for you know it to come off or be damaged and then have to get it resprayed so I, I prefer to keep it like this um, and I think with my color scheme with the gray I don't think the the black looks too out of place so I'm happy to leave it like this uh, but yeah this is the the engine bay of the car um, which is you know pretty pretty simple so got the Ford 1.6 Signa engine here uh, got my transponder here or this is the transponder key which links to um, a built-in uh, transponder um, which is used for timing uh, the circuits and your you know it keeps hold of your your times and your positions um, we've got an oil overfill um, Kind of uh, container here I think that's the right uh, terminology to use but yeah mine's not too not too bad not too full which is good so I don't have to empty that got the battery here got the um, the brake cylinder here and this is the pedal box so if I open this up I'll be able to see my pedals I won't do that because um, I'm by myself and my tools are in the car um, but yeah the pedals are within within here and you can adjust them to, um, to alter the spacing between the brake I think all three pedals but between them to you know, alter to your foot size and preference for heating and towing etc um, got the air filter here uh, dipstick here which is cable tied so it doesn't flow off during racing um, yeah I, I mean I've got so many cable ties because they've got so many different uses so I've used one here I've used them to clip my um, belts together as I've removed the seat because I don't want them you know my belts, belts flying about um, during uh, during racing or when I'm in the car I've used them to, as a secondary reinforcement for my GoPro um, they're used all around the car to, uh, you know, secure the GoPro, not the GoPro, the, uh, the V-Box cables that run throughout the car. So if you're a racing driver, cable, cable ties are your friend. Uh, so yeah, that's used for that. Um, and in all honesty, I'm not the, the most mechanically minded individual. So um, yeah, I, I'm not really able to... Um, yeah to talk you through much about the car but for any of you who are interested in learning more about the kind of mechanical aspects uh yeah let me know and i will uh yeah try and get your questions answered um so yeah that's a view on the uh the engine bay and that's a wrap of the tour of my car 
There's lots more I can show you both in and outside of the car. So if there's anything else you want to see, please leave me a comment below. Fingers crossed, I'll be back on track soon. So please remember to like and subscribe for more racing content. Hopefully see you soon.